Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to explore another color in our ongoing exploring color series. Today it's time to explore red. That's right, we're going to talk all about red. This is a color that is classically, I know, a lot of people complain about, but I actually find it to be one of the more pleasurable and easy colors to paint with, as long as you're following a, a few simple rules. So I've got a nice selection of reds here. You'll notice that uh, there's some slight variation to all of these, lots of different brands. We've got some Vallejo, Nocturna stuff, War Colors, Pro Acryl, sure, okay? Nocturne, I know, is Vallejo as well, but it's just one of their sub-brands. Red is fascinating because it... Last time what we talked about with green and how we can recognize such a broad spectrum of colors with green, I thought it was only appropriate to jump to the other side of the color wheel directly. Uh, red is interesting because for the same reason, we will tend to recognize the red in a lot of things as being a sort of dominant color. Red is very powerful for how it's perceived. The human eye will tend to track toward red. Red is obviously the color of blood, but it's also the color of life. We perceive things that have red in them to be alive, so skin tones that have uh, some kind of, of red color in them, especially when it's sort of Caucasian or, or uh, lighter color skin tones will tend to look more alive. Uh, when, you, you, when you're doing darker flesh, uh, or, or more African skin tones or anything like that, you still want to make sure you've got a, a tone like this in there, especially wherever blood would be near the surface. This is true, by the way, when you're working on aliens and monsters and anything, regardless of what they are, they might have blue blood or something like that. You know, I think classically like, what, Spock, Vulcans bleed green blood or something, right? I don't remember exactly, but yet, you know, it's not like they recolored or make up Leonard Nimoy every time to look like he didn't have any red at all. He would still get flushed cheeks. His nose has still had a bit of a red tinge to it. He would still have red beneath his eyes if he was sleepy, right? So red is just a very powerful tool in our arsenal. Of course, it's also very transparent. And that I suspect is where a lot of people run into challenges. Because red is such a transparent color, being that it has uh, just the natural way that the pigments that make up red are made, uh, whether they're artist pigments or the more traditional like miniature pigments, the reality is red is just a naturally transparent color. As such, when people have classically tried to paint it directly over black, it then looks like utter crap. Uh, so. Step one is don't paint red over black. You'll notice here, like most things, I have a Zenithold miniature. I also then washed him and dry brushed him. This is as per my preparing for your best paint job video. Uh, but we're gonna turn his his uh, outfit here red. We'll do the we'll do the lower part of his robe because that'll be nice to work on. It has lots of interesting places where we can hide shadows and light. And we can use any red, but we're gonna go ahead and use some bold py pyrote pyrole. Let's say Pyrol, that's an L. Red from Pro Acryl, because why not? But we could use any of them. You can use any red you have. What I wanna talk about with the color red is yes, it is highly transparent. That's definitely true. But we can absolutely use that to our advantage. That's what's going to make it so easy to work with, to blend and to shadow and to highlight. And I think that's what we're gonna spend a lot of time on in this video is discussing exactly what can still count as red and how to really work with it in a deeper way. So, got a little bit of red here on our palette. Just a nice little, nice little dab will do you. I'm just gonna grab that. And then as with everything with the Pro Acryl, you'll notice it's quite strong. We can still see a little bit of that color coming through. And we'll just grab that and keep pushing it around. There we go. Just get a nice little base coat on there. Do do do. Red, red, red. Using a big brush. Because look how much I can paint and I haven't gone back to the palette yet. We just keep pushing the paint around, spreading it so it's nice and even. No brush strokes, no build up. There we go. And what we get is a nice bright layer of red, right? Now, 
Uh, red, in addition to being highly transparent, is still very, as I mentioned, attention grabbing. Like your eye, when you look at this, especially against something like a black and white image, it just naturally snaps your eye into focus. This is where you look. If you think of a lot of, uh, you'll see this a lot of times in art, and I think movies like The Spirit and stuff like that did it, uh, where they would have basically in black and white, but then they would have like some images of red. You see this a lot in like pictures in hotels where there'll be like a black and white image, but then there's a single red rose. Ooh, and it does draw your attention, right? Because red just naturally snaps. Wherever you look, or wherever your eyes happen to be looking, if there's red, they're gonna naturally draw to that place. So you wanna be careful when you use something like highly saturated red, because it will, uh, it will draw attention to wherever it is. So make sure you're placing the viewer's eye where it should be when you use it. So while that sets completely, I wanna talk a little about the main challenges of red. You have to go pretty far into orange for us to not really see it as red, like red-orange type of colors will still largely be seen as red. And you have to go pretty far around into like uh, a purple or a violet to get rid of the red out of that as well. Red just tends to dominate. One of the things that people often run afoul of is how to shade red. So, of course, we can go to something like a darker red. So this is Vallejo model color black red. That's certainly a darker red. And this is shaded in the normal sense of the word. Shading means to add black to a hue, right? Uh, or we'll talk about tinting, which is to add white to make it brighter in a moment. So you could just add this and that effectively you get a darker color red. You could use it straight from the bottle, but that's not all you have. You can bring in more colors. So you can bring in something like purple or brown or even green. Because green is the complementary color to red, uh, it will, when you mix this in, you will naturally go to a darker brown color. And if you guys, you get to 50-50, ostensibly you get brown. Um, so you can kind of skip the middle man and go straight here. But using any of these will tend to give you a more vibrant hue and there'll be some slight differences like using purple will tend to give you a richer, more sort of luxurious feel to your red. It'll feel like almost, you know, sort of silks or something like that. Using the green will just take the color and make it dull. It'll feel very naturalistic as though it's in uh, real light because by adding the contrasting color, you're effectively desaturating it down. So it'll just make it look like it's in shadow. Adding the brown uh, will tend to make it look more dirty Right, so it will tend to look, uh, you know, realistically more muddy, but also just less vibrant. This will kill the vibrancy. Of course, you can also cut out all the middlemen and you can also just go straight to black. This is also possible, but you have to be very, 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 very careful. Okay? So let's play around with a little bit of that. And the ones I'm really keen to work with here, I, I have a, a whole video on desaturating uh, colors on desaturated colors where I actually use green. So we're just going to use a little bit of purple and a little bit of black because I this will be an interesting contrast to sort of show the difference here. It's easy for us to take red and I think one of the most common things we do especially when we start out is we sort of grab our red and we just slap something like Agrax Earthshade all over it and say well job's a good one. I really don't like that uh, because it it kills all of the visual interest out because Agrax is really a black brown. And that's sort of the least interesting thing you can do with red. So instead we're gonna take a little of that and we're gonna grab some of that purple and mix it in. Okay, so what we get is this much more sort of rustic, uh, let's see if we can get that light off of the reflecting, there we go. This sort of much more rustic tone. So, uh, got him on camera there. Let's go ahead and then we can just place those shadows. And you notice it's a very minor transition because again, it's naturally a very transparent color. So I can just keep working in more and more purple and just very slowly and naturally get those really nice deep shadows, right? But it still feels like it's 
very much in tone. So I can just kind of spread it out there. We'll do a little feathering on the edge and boom, I've got some really nice shadows that are still more interesting than just if I had gone to say pure black or pure brown or something like that. Now, if we want to use the black, right, let's use him on the side here. We'll go around here because this will be a nice place. We can, but it just, it's less visual information we're giving to the viewer. So if you can see the difference between those two. Right? You see how immediately, oh, sorry, I took it off camera there. You see how immediately this one is less interesting than this one. I know that's a very subtle difference, but even if you don't recognize it, your subconscious does. It knows when more visual information is being communicated. So here we can take that and we'll just put some of that black in there. We'll grab a little more. Force that down in there, maybe up in the darkest spot. And then we'll just feather that out. And this is where it becomes like shading red, no matter what you're using, ends up being an absolute pleasure because it's so transparent and so easy to get a nice smooth blend. It's just really fun to play around with red shadows. So my advice to you would be don't limit yourself to just something like Agrax or that kind of color. When it comes to red, try mixing in, you know, your purples or your greens, right? Or something like that. Uh, as opposed to just going to brown and black because you'll still get a nice shadowed red But you'll have a lot more visual information communicated But that of course is just shading it and that's the easy part. We can all shade red But can we highlight it? Will it blend? So let's talk about highlighting red because this is the other place people often have problems Red is very naturally transparent and when you a lot of times the way we highlight many of our colors is we add some kind of white now, there are often better ways to highlight than just adding pure white, but it's, you know, sort of a common thing. So, red can get highlighted in a couple different ways. The first way we can highlight red is we can bring it into the orange tone, right? And this can be appropriate depending on what we're trying to achieve. If we want the, the color to look very, uh, very orange at the highlight, like maybe it's some armor that that's actually kind of the tone, great then you can just mix in orange. But this is necessarily shifting your color. It is making it not red, right? The other alternatives are we use some kind of not white, but near white. So here I have a selection of three paints I like for this purpose, which is buff from Vallejo. So this is a very bone-like color. We have some pale sand, which is a little more white, but still quite ivory, you can see there. And if you want the comparison to just a standard dead white, you can really see the difference there. And then of course, ice yellow, which is actually my favorite. Using a little bit, something like this, uh, Scale 75 makes like high chic yellow or something uh, that's pretty close to this. Uh, you know, there's a couple different colors they have that are in this same tone. Uh, but any kind of bright yellow white can be a great way to highlight and it's going to be much uh, It's going to be a much more vibrant red than if we just go straight to white because when we put in straight white with red What do we get? Pink I'm gonna assume you all just said pink. I can't hear you obviously because this is in the past uh, But we don't want to turn our minis pink often I, I like to turn it pink sometimes, but you know, so usually not what we're on about <laughs> So let's add a couple drops of ice yellow there. Uh, we're also gonna grab a drop of the bright orange. Of course it would be locked up, just cleared it. I do like Vallejo paints, but if there is anything that they have, it's that this tip clogs way too often and way too fast. Just literally before this video, I cleared that. There we go. Okay, so got some orange, we've got some ice yellow. Now I'm also gonna put a little pale sand on here to show you just another sort of trick around this. So let's grab a little bit of that, much closer to actual white. Okay, so back to our rat. 
I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw some globes at you. All right, let's take the red here and let's just straight mix it with some of that ice yellow. Okay. All right. Now what we're gonna do is just go ahead and hit some of those highlights there. Get the top of his knees, that kind of stuff. Okay, and so there we can get to a nice, really strong, bright red by adding that in, okay? Now, the other option is, of course, we could take that red, we could bring in a little bit of that orange tone. And you can obviously see the big difference there between those two, right? When we bring orange in, that's a big difference in how that feels. So there, we'll just go ahead and go over the same part here. We'll come back here and get something. You know, we clearly move it into the orange. It's still highlighted, but it's much more clearly orange than it is red. One of my actual favorite tricks with highlighting red is to just take some pure something like pale sand. And we'll do it over here on this, this knee here. I just come in and I just sketch out my highlight that I want in the actual ivory, just like that, okay? Then, instead of, uh, instead of trying to mix it, because I want to avoid that pink, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that red and just make a nice thin glaze out of it. In this case, I'll do it with water, maybe I use a little glaze medium, you know, whatever. We test it on the back of our hand to make sure we're of an appropriate thinness. We need a little bit more paint there. Okay. Great. So then once that's dry, what we do is we just then come in and glaze over that ivory. And the cool trick about this is that again, red is very naturally transparent. So I can actually glaze over everything, let those colors work, and what happens is we bring all those tones together. Now the first time you apply that glaze, depending on how thin it is or what you're using, it might end up looking a little pink. But when you go in a second time, it's gonna immediately snap into being red. This is really one of my favorite tricks with working with red. I'll do it up here again where you can see it very easily on the top of his uh, his shoulder here. This is a very nicely laid out part. The reason I really like this trick is because it gives us an opportunity. Let's go ahead and get that darker, bring it a little more purple in there. One of the other nice advantages of purple is it's also quite transparent. We'll talk about purple more in a future video. Okay, so now we've got that part up there red. We want to intensify that a little bit. We want to get that even brighter because the red, especially once it dries, a lot of people say if you're painting with a red that has a very satin sheen or even a glossy sheen, it's gonna look really intense. And then when you mat it out, all of a sudden it looks dull and lifeless. You know, what happened? I thought I had a bright, intense red and it just went away. It didn't go away, it's just matte red looks a lot different and is much less vibrant. That's why often when you paint your red on and it's wet, you'll be like, oh man, that looks great. That's a really intense red. And then it mats out and you're like, oh, okay. I guess it's just kind of flat red. So, however, we can bring that back. Like I said, we go to just some ivory here. Let's go ahead and bring that up top. We'll just hit some highlights here right at the top of his, his thing. Maybe we'll hit the edge. 
There we go. We let that dry, which should just take a second or two. And then what we're gonna do instead of doing that, let's get some more red glaze going here. Okay. Okay, and then we just come in, we do a nice thin glaze over the top. And by letting more of that white show through, using the transparency of red as an undershade, what we effectively get is we restore that tricky satin sheen that's normally there uh, when the paint is wet. And instead, we're just actually tricking the eye into thinking it's still the same thing and it's still there and in place. And so what we end up with is a really nice transition of this really, really vibrant red, right? In this case, the, uh, the Pro Acryl Red is so pigment tense, I didn't really have to worry about it turning pink very much uh, because it's just, it immediately has the pigmentation to, to stay red. If you're using a different color red, something with less pigment like a Citadel or something, you may need to just apply, you know, two glaze thin coats. So, but there you go. That's Exploring Red. It's a really fun color. Like already you can see just how eye-catching that model looks with that bright red transition there. Uh, the brighter reds really popping against the darker color. All of that was shaded with purple as to what we're looking at right now. And, you know, the best part about it is you can just keep pushing it around because I can keep, you know, taking that red. Maybe I glaze a little more of it here to kind of soften out that transition on the side. Maybe we take a little more of that strong purple. And we really make sure that lower shadow is dark or under there, right? Like we can keep working with it in really interesting ways to keep pushing that contrast around and just really, really make that red interesting. Okay? So, keys with red that you want to remember. One, uh, it is your color of life uh, and of blood. It's eye-catching and it will tend to draw the eye wherever you place it on the model. So be careful with intense saturated red. By saturated red, I just mean something like this where it's straight out of the pot and it is just red. If you're gonna use red and you don't wanna draw the eye, then you wanna desaturate it. That means mixing in black, brown, purple, green, and or lighter colors, but then you're gonna go into pink in many cases. Um, so use your, make your shadows more interesting than just browns or blacks. You can use lots of different colors to make shadows and reds. Dark purples, uh, dark greens, browns, and blacks will all work and have slightly different looks. The place where I will tend to use black, by the way, I still mix in a little purple, but the place where I tend to use black the most is red armor. So if I'm doing something like a Blood Angel Space Marine, red is really, or sorry, black is your a great choice to saturate that because it can help more of the sort of non-metallic look of it, though I will still usually bring in a little purple, just have some visual information there. When you're highlighting, the key is don't just limit yourself to only going into the orange spectrum and don't be afraid of the ghost of turning pink. Just use something that's warmer and has more yellow in it. Something like your buff, bone, ice yellow, something like that. Mixing in these will tend to prevent the color from going pink. Uh, or alternatively, you can take something even brighter like a pale sand or an ivory. You can do your highlights just in that and then use the natural transparency of red to then smooth back over and get a really intense, nice, lustrous red. So there you go. With that, that's Exploring Colors Red. We're gonna continue this series with, with, uh, until we work our way through all the colors. It's just fun to think about these colors and how they can work uh, and the spectrums that they can push in. Uh, red is a fun color because like I said, it's so dominant. It's, it's so much, it looms so large in the color wheel of our mind because it will just tend to win. So I thought it was a fascinating one to do. It's an easy color to practice your blending with. So if you're having trouble making blends with things like blue or purple, where they tend to get lighter by the addition of white, uh, red is a great color for you to practice your blending with and build up some quick confidence and quick wins because red is naturally smooth. 
You can fly between the layers and the glazes. Everything shows through. Everything stacks really nicely. You see very few hard transition lines. It's a wonderful color. So there you go. That's Exploring Colors Red. Uh, I certainly hope you like that. If you did, give it a like. If you've got suggestions for future hobby cheating videos, go ahead and drop those down in the comments as well as any questions you might have. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. Uh, but as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.